Hey movie lovers, welcome to What's in Cinemas. I'm Charlie David Page, I'm the editor at Switch. Join me as I take you through what's hitting the big screen in September 2023. Dude, what? Life finds a way. You didn't just quote Jurassic Park. <laughs> well, it's the end of the world as we know it, with Biosphere. Billy and Ray, played by Mark Duplass and Sterling K. Brown, are, as far as we know, the last two men left alive after a devastating event. Surviving inside a dome designed by Ray, it's been working well for them until the fragile ecosystem begins changing. Ray? Look how sick he is. Oh God, it's real. We're gonna die. I can't breathe. Dude. I'm gonna spin it out. The pond seal is solid and we're sealed in here. Wait, do you see that? This is crazy! It looks like the whole world is ending again! Unless... What? You can check out my Sydney Film Festival review for Biosphere on the Switch website now. Just click on the link in the description to this video. I also spoke recently with the film's director, co-writer and producer Mel Eslin. We spoke about all sorts of things including how great stories like this come about, how the Hollywood strike is affecting indie productions like this, and how big picture ideas are helped along by comedy. Let's take a look. This film is sort of packaged as one film to get people in their seats. Uh, and it's, and hopefully a lot of people who might not normally sign up for this type of journey in a film, um, you know, and, and just to be open to the ride. And I think a big part of that was, you know, it is in the package of a science fiction film. And then the other big element is the comedy. And I, I'm a big believer in comedy. I think it's unifying. I think it lets our guards down so we can be open to new things. And I, I mean that in a beautiful way. Um, and it's also just fun, and I think it just keeps keeps people engaged when they're laughing. You know, Mark and I work a lot in improv, and he likes to have space for that. And I do too, but then at a certain point I was like, I really do want to dial in some like pre-calculated laughs to make sure we're kind of hitting that, where we never get too far away from the comedy and that energy, because I thought it was really important. So that was a lot of the dialogue that I spent a lot of time just like nailing what that would be and um and thankfully mark and sterling are just like killer uh comedic pacers in their performance so they were they were able to take that and then take it up like five notches my full interview with mel Eslin about all things biosphere is out now click up top to check it out prepare for things to get dark in the black comedy drama charcoal in the remote Brazilian countryside, an impoverished family struggling to care for their bedridden father had their lives uprooted when a crooked nurse offers them a diabolical deal. Kill their dad so an Argentinian drug kingpin can take his place. Premiering at last year's Toronto International Film Festival, this is the feature directorial debut from Carolina Markovitz, who also wrote Charcoal. She grew up in the countryside of Sao Paulo, where the film is set. You'll be sure to have a soft spot for Everybody Loves Jen. Blanche Gardin plays golden girl Jen, who takes a trip to Lisbon after her mother's death, where she had a flat. She runs into a former classmate, Jean, played by Lauren Lafitte, and while she's trying to make a clean break, could he be the breath of fresh air she needs? Va me montrer comment tu fais des cartons. C'est ça qu'il faut faire, faut les, faut bien les ranger. Ah. T'es un peu toc toc, hein, jeune meilleur. Non. Un peu frappe à dingo. J'aime bien. Non, mais pas du tout. Hein. We're giving you the chance to see Everybody Loves Jen in cinemas thanks to Vendetta Films. Score one of five double passes to see the film in cinemas by heading to maketheswitch.com.au before the 3rd of September to enter. Let's get a bit of Bollywood now with the hard-hitting Jarwan. With the title translating as Soldier, this action thriller sees a man, played by superstar Shah Rukh Khan, driven by a vendetta to right the wrongs of the past with the help of a collective of women. Let's take a look at one of the songs from the film, Chalea. Chalea. 
The star-studded blockbuster is written and directed by Atlee. Known for his work in Tamil films, Jawan marks his directorial debut in Hindi. That's up against another Indian release, it's called Miss Shetty, Mr. Polishetty. It stars two big names, Anushka Shetty and Naveen Polishetty. She plays a professional chef living in London, while he plays a wannabe stand-up comedian. The twist here is that she's seeking a partner to conceive a child while he's looking for a long-term relationship. Get ready to fall in love all over again with My Big Fat Greek Wedding 3. The Portocalos family are reuniting and taking a trip to where else but Greece. But of course, nothing goes quite as planned. You are the Portocalos family. We are related through your papu's papu, who was married to my great great yaya sister sister in law. I want Bula, I will be your favorite. I promised my dad I would find his best friends. I know them. Do they still live here? No. How do we find them? They will come for the reunion. Did they tell you they're coming? No. There's no other bedrooms. Family sleepover. <laughs> this is one reunion. <laughs> We'll never forget. Do you know these men? No. I am surprised, but I am not surprised because I'm never surprised. You lost me. Again, written by, starring, and for the first time in the franchise, directed by Nia Vidalos. She says the story came to her after losing both her father and Michael Constantine, who played her father Gus in a very short space of time. And her dad had always wanted Nia and her siblings to visit his family village in Greece, so she felt that this was a fitting tribute. And if you'd like to join the family getaway, we're giving away three double passes to see My Big Fat Greek Wedding 3 in cinemas thanks to Universal Pictures. Just make sure you head over to makethe-switch.com.au before the 3rd of September for your chance to win. Time for a new take on the turtles we know and love. It's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem. The four sewer-dwelling brothers are sick of being shut away at the insistence of Splinter, wanting to be seen as the heroes of New York. So with the help of their new friend, April O'Neil, they decide to take on a mysterious crime syndicate, but quickly find themselves in over their heads. Can I kick it? We pick out super far, and then everyone will accept us! Can I kick what? Whoa! Shit, 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 shit. What the? Y'all some little tortoises, huh? I can't believe there are other mutants! It's time for mutants to rule the earth. We can't stop him. We gotta try. Michelangelo, you have heart. Donatello, you have wisdom. Raphael, you have bravery. And Leonardo, honor. Together, there's nothing you cannot accomplish. Jess from the Switch team says this is the first time, on the big screen at least, that the turtles have actually been portrayed as teenagers, with the voices actually recorded together to achieve the most authentic dialogue. Now, Chris has seen the latest incarnation of the Ninja Turtles on the big screen. Here's what he had to say. Our favourite heroes in a half shell are back in animation after a few live action films that we don't really like to talk about and it's the most fun adventure we've ever seen these turtles go on with fantastic animation absolutely hilarious scenes and just an all-around fun nostalgic package the energy of actually having them voiced by teenagers for the first time ever which is kind of crazy when you think about that this is the first time they've done that for these characters just really adds this really unique, fun, energetic ride. But yeah, it's definitely for turtle fans, non-turtle fans, this is Ninja Turtles at their best. And that's why I give it four stars. Cowabunga, my dudes. Chris's review is up on the website, so head on down to the description to find his link for the full verdict on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem now. We're getting back in the habit, but this ain't no sister act. It's The Nun 2. She thought it was over, but no. Sister Irene, played again by Thaisa Famija, must once again come face to face with Valak, the demon nun. This thing, it's come back for me. This demon was once an angel. Rejected by God. Stripped of power. 
now we're back. It's okay to be scared. I'm scared too. You send that thing back to hell. There's just no stopping the Conjuring universe. And with The Nun 2 taking in US $365 million at the box office worldwide, it was inevitable that it too would get a sequel. Now, Chris is taking a look at The Nun 2. We'll be adding a link to the description of this video. And if you dare to check out The Nun 2 for yourself, we'll have five double passes to give away thanks to Warner Brothers. Just make sure you head to maketheswitch.com.au before the 3rd of September to enter. Time to act out now as we visit theatre camp. Welcome to this scrappy little haven for budding performers in upstate New York. It's in disarray. The founder's in a coma and her son is a clueless prat. So it's up to the staff to band together and ensure the curtain rises on opening night. Welcome auditioners. You guys are so talented, so unbelievable. This will break you. This will fully destroy you. Congratulations on being the most talented kids at camp. Starfish, starfish, jiggle like a jackal, jiggle like a jackal. These are the things we can do with masks. These people are really weird. We're gonna need to prioritize the musicals, which means the straight plays are gonna have to be acoustic. Quick question, what's a straight play? There aren't musicals and then there are straight plays. So then what would be a gay play? I guess a, 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 a musical. Oh, cool. Directed by Molly Gordon and Nick Lieberman, starring Gordon, Ben Platt, Noah Galvin, Jimmy Tatro and Ayo Adabiri, and premiering at Sundance, there is no question why this campy comedy has won the hearts of many audiences since then. Chris's review will be up on the website shortly, so keep an eye on the description to the video. We'll drop the link in there as soon as it's up. But in the meantime, if you'd like to check out the full trailer, click on the link up top now. Kenneth Brenner is back for his third outing as Hercule Poirot in A Haunting in Venice. When a seance goes wrong on All Hallows' Eve, Poirot must track down the murderer. But having retired, has the world famous detective lost the skills he once had? You can't trap us here. Somebody is dead. No one shall leave this place until I know who did it. A ghost killed her. There must be a rational answer for all of this. Just admit that you are up against something bigger than you. No! You were saying? Daniel from the Switch team says this is based on the Agatha Christie 1969 novel Halloween Party, jumping ahead to one of the last books that Poirot appeared in. And as you can see from the trailer, it's a usual Branner affair packed with great names including Michelle Yeoh, Tina Fey, Kelly Riley and Jamie Dornan. If you'd like to see more, make sure you click up top now to watch the full trailer for A Haunting in Venice. Flying onto screen for the very first time is DC's Blue Beetle. Shola Maraduena stars as Jamie Reyes, who's searching to find his place in the world when he stumbles upon an ancient piece of alien technology that turns his life upside down and puts the life of everyone else around him in danger. It's called the Scarab. It's some kind of world destroying weapon. It's designed to protect its host. To say that you want. Sometimes it does what you want, and sometimes it doesn't. I, I, I think I cut a bus in half. The Scarab chose you, but it belongs to me. Hello, you feel for your family. Makes you weak. I just want to rap. 
Though it's come out in the United States as one of the better reviewed DC Extended Universe films, it took in just over US $25 million on its opening weekend, perhaps reflecting some superhero fatigue, but it did barely knock Barbie off the top of the charts after over a month in cinemas. But there's certainly more than meets the eye to this film, so if you'd like to see more of Blue Beetle, click up top now to watch the full trailer. Here's one for the lovers of cinema. It's called Last Film Show. Sammy is just nine years old when he discovers the magic of film. This spirited kid wants to live and breathe the 35 millimeter art form, and he'll fight heaven and earth to pursue his dream. <laughs> After premiering at the 2021 Tribeca Film Festival, Last Film Show was India's submission for the international feature film at this year's Academy Awards. Look out below, it's Ruby Gilman, Teenage Kraken. 15 year old Ruby is just a regular teenager, or so she thinks. But there's a secret lurking deep within her family, something that's about to change her life forever. Your mother never told you you were royalty? The women in our family have the mighty power to turn into giant kraken. What now? Ruby, you're a princess. Address the crowd. I think I am having a panic attack. You are the protector of all the ocean's creatures. It's up to you to stop the evil mermaids. <laughs> but people love mermaids. Of course they do. People are stupid. Dave from the Switch team says that while Ruby Gilman is not the first DreamWorks animation to be led by a female character, it is the first to feature a female character's name in the title. And it turns out this was a pleasant surprise to voice star Lana Condor. In an interview with her, she told him she didn't realise that the film's title had changed to include her character's name until the marketing for the film started appearing. Now, Liz's review for Ruby Gilman, Teenage Kraken will be hitting the Switch website closer to the film's release. We'll be sure to add a link in the description to this video once it's gone up, so keep an eye out for it. Plus, we'll be giving you the chance to check it out for yourself thanks to Universal. Head on over to maketheswitch.com.au between the 3rd and the 10th of September to win one of five double passes. Time for a father-daughter film with a twist now in Scrapper. Georgie's just 12 years old when her mum dies. Forced to take care of herself, she manages to get on pretty well until her absent dad arrives back in her life. You think you'll stay? I don't care. I think you can just turn out, say sorry, but it'll be all right. Your mum never wanted me around, you know. She said that, did she? I knew it. But you didn't even try. Come on, do your job properly. Go, 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 go. I didn't have a lighter. You missed one. Really? Didn't think I needed you. Oh, I, <laughs> I don't need you to replace Mum. I need someone. Jess caught Scrapper at the Sydney Film Festival. Here's what she had to say. Yes, I am back with another festival, darling, Scrapper. This one is by director Charlotte Regan. Now, her resume isn't particularly long, but if Scrapper is anything to go by, that won't be the truth for much longer. And we here at Switch are loving all the content coming out by female directors. Now, this film stars Harris Dickinson. This British crumpet is hot, hot, hot. So enjoy him on the independent circuit while you can, because eventually the MCU or those like other people are going to snatch him up. Now, the twist here is that he is out acted by 12 year old newcomer Lola Campbell, believe it or not. They play father and daughter in this beautiful, unique story, which everyone should go out and see. Scrapper, three stars. 
Jess's full review is up on the Switch website now. Click on the link in the description below to check it out now. And we're giving you the chance to win one of five double passes to see Scrapper for yourself thanks to Madman. Head to maketheswitch.com.au between the 3rd and the 10th of September to enter. Let's have a hit of horror now with It Lives Inside. Sam shuns her Indian culture in order to fit in at school. But when an evil spirit latches onto her former best friend, she has to embrace her heritage to save her and herself. It's called the Pishash. It doesn't kill you right away. It eats you slowly. When it's ready. your soul. The big bad here is a demon from Hindu and Buddhist mythologies, but the story also addresses a lot of issues faced by first generation immigrants to the US, many of them encountered by the film's writer and director Vishal Dutta. Get switched on with Nam Joon Peck. Moon is the oldest TV. This Korean-born artist, who moved to the US during the Korean War, is commonly considered to be the founder of video art, and coined the phrase electric superhighway. He was, in so many ways, ahead of his time. Nam Joon was non-stop. What he was always interested in is to bring cultures together. Shall we toast the new year? We know the world through the colonial guise. How would it be if we were capable of actually seeing the world from another point of view? Nam June was always transcending our vision of reality, opening up unbelievable possibilities. Including Nam June's writings read by Stephen Yoon, this documentary is a testament to the kind of artist he was. His work travelled the world, much of which has now been acquired by the Smithsonian American Art Museum. Liam Neeson is on the road again with Retribution. It's just another ordinary day for Neeson's Matt Turner when he gets a message from an unknown caller. There's a bomb in the car that he and his two children are in, and if he doesn't follow the orders precisely, they'll die. But when Matt deviates from the plan, the caller leaves a trail of destruction and a trail of evidence pointing to Matt. You think I'm the bomber? Well, I guess you've had a tough day. I know that you lost a lot of money for your clients who invested in your fund. A lot of people are worried about you. You've got everybody's attention, Matt. He is still out there. If you can find him, I will. I'm in control here. No, you're not. You heard my daughter, son of a bitch. I will kill you. What's it gonna be? Drive. Liam Neeson always seems to get the short straw as a parent in films, from the Taken franchise to Cold Pursuit to The Grey and non-stop. At 71 years old, at least there's only so much longer he can keep putting the poor kids through this. Now, if a little Neeson action takes your fancy, we're giving you the chance to win one of five double passes to see Retribution in cinemas thanks to Studio Canal. Just head to maketheswitch.com.au between the 10th and the 17th of September to enter. Get ready for Netflix's next big flick. It's also getting a theatrical release. It's called Fair Play. This thriller sees Emily and Luke, played by Phoebe Dinover and Alden Ehrenreich, working at the same hedge fund and also secretly in a relationship together. But when an opportunity comes up for a promotion that only one of them can get, it causes a rift between the two of them. You made half the big calls last quarter alone. So, what do you want? He's promoting me. Congratulations. I'm sorry. Why? I'm so happy for you. Okay. Wonder how she got the fast pass. Reporting to her? Jesus, man. Are you out of your mind? You're gonna end our relationship by setting off a bomb. We all do filthy things, but we don't trick it back into the office.
after its premiere at the Sundance Film Festival, there was a heated bidding war for the film's distribution rights, with Netflix eventually winning out with a US $20 million price tag. Not a bad job from first-time feature writer and director Chloe Dumont. Time now for a colourful comedy with the third Indian release of the month. Legendary Indian film director Smeep Kang is back with his latest family debacle, Gadi Jandi A. Chalangan Mardi. Happy is caught in the middle of his love for Pooja and his father's materialistic demands. First and foremost, a little red car. Will Happy be able to live up to his namesake and be able to satisfy the love of his life and his family? It's mega. It's meta. It's Paw Patrol the Mighty Movie. Everyone's Favourite animated pooches are back with a new big screen adventure. When our world is threatened, one team is ready to launch. <gasps> Did he say launch? Uh, no. I said launch. Uh -huh. The meteor's heading straight for us! <gasps> it's down! Whoa! I think we got superpowers. <laughs> I feel the need for super speed. I'm a wrecking ball. Surf <laughs> Look at your paws. <laughs> Great. Now the clumsy pup shoots fireballs out of his paws. I've got the power. Those should be my superpowers. Coming in hot. I'm gonna take them one by one. <gasps> oh my goodness. I can talk! <laughs> I have so much to say! Give me that! As you can see, there's lots to be liked here by kids big and small, and among a top-notch cast including James Marsden, Kristen Bell, Taraji P. Henson, Dax Shepard, Tyler Perry, Chris Rock, Serena Williams, and Jimmy Kimmel, Chris says, Kim Kardashian will be returning to Paw Patrol in this film along with her 10-year-old daughter North, who's making her acting debut in the Mighty Movie, as well as a cameo from her 7-year-old son, Saint West. If you don't like horror, you're not going to want to touch this one with a 10-foot pole. It's Saw X. John Kramer returns, this time a sick and desperate man who travels to Mexico for an experimental medical procedure. But when he finds out he's been conned, Jigsaw is filled with a new sense of purpose, setting traps for those who wronged him. Hello everyone, it's time to play a game. You all pretended to cure me, but what I have planned for each of you is very real. The only thing I have not provided is your anesthetic. But trust me, you will want to remain alert. Almost two decades on from the launch of the Saw franchise, fans of the original few films are celebrating the return of what seems to be the classic films. Now, Joel from the Switch team recalls he watched the first Saw film when he was about 11 so that he could understand the jokes from Scary Movie 4. Big mistake. He was petrified and has pretty much steered clear of horror movies ever since. But for those of you who are fans of the genre, we'll be giving you the chance to check out Saw X for yourself thanks to Studio Canal. So to win one of five double passes, simply head to maketheswitch.com.au between the 17th and the 24th of September to enter. Let's step into the octagon. We're going to roll with the punches with Stylebender. Nigerian-born, New Zealand-based, Israel Adesanya is more than just a mixed martial arts champion. He's advocated for tougher penalties against coward punches, is a fan of anime, hence his nickname The Last Stylebender, and he's a former dancer. Dancing in front of three people gives me anxiety. Fighting in front of millions of people doesn't do shit to me. They don't teach how to be famous, so I've had to learn this shit myself. Israel Adesanya has found himself under fire for trash talking. 
all these cameras on me and shit. He wears his emotions on his sleeve. And in this sport, that's pretty abnormal. <laughs> yeah. I still struggle. I'm just fighting through everything. I have to make him understand what's going to keep him focused is his love for the sport. He never let me not be me. I remind myself I'm human. I'm able to just go forth with my life. Shot over five years, Starbander promises to provide a peek into the inner workings of Israel and the city kickboxing world. Finally, a film where the singularity has happened and we're facing the apocalypse. It's called The Creator. War has broken out between humans and artificial intelligence. Now the man who made them, played by John David Washington, is the only one who can stop them by destroying a super weapon built by the machines. Did you locate the weapon? Yeah, it's just a kid. Are you going to heaven? No. You gotta be a good person to go to heaven. So, we're just saying, we can't go to heaven because you're not good. And I'm not a person. Do you have any idea what the thing is? She looks like a little girl now, but she's growing. Whoever has that kid wins the war. Who said you want that? What do you want, sweetie? For robots to be free. Oh, we don't have that in the fridge. How about ice cream? <laughs> Ozzy Gareth Edwards directed and co-wrote this. He's behind Rogue One and Godzilla, so has some solid sci-fi roots. He says it was inspired by films like Apocalypse Now, Blade Runner, Baraka, Lone Wolf and Cub, and Akira. And that's what's in cinemas this month. Now, the Switch website doesn't have any advertising on it because we think that it's really important to keep the films front and center. So we rely on people like yourself to keep the website running. We have our Kofi and our Patreon pages up on the screen right now. And if you're able to contribute anything, it helps keep independent film journalism alive. We also have our YouTube channel, which you're watching right now. And if you like this video, make sure you subscribe. We have heaps of other similar content. And remember, like it, follow it, right here at Switch.